In the year 646 AD, 1300 years ago, the Chinese monk Xuanzang of the Tang Dynasty wrote in his book, Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, about a description of a country called Gandhara, he wrote, Gandhara is more than 500 kilometers from east to west and more than 400 kilometers from north to south. It is located to the east of the Indus River. The capital city of the country is called Puru Sapora, with a circumference of over 20 kilometers. The royal family has no heir, and the country is subordinate to the Kapichi Kingdom. The cities and towns are deserted, and the population is sparse. There are more than 10 ruined Buddhist monasteries, dilapidated and desolate, overgrown with weeds. Many of the stupas are in ruins. There are around a hundred temples, and various religious beliefs. This passage describes a country called, Gandhara, where dilapidated and decaying Buddhist architectural remnants can be found everywhere. However, just over 200 years ago, another Chinese monk named Faxian recorded in his book, records of Buddhist kingdoms, a different account of a country called, Gandhara, he wrote, after traveling east for five days, we arrived at the city of Gandhara, which was governed by Prince Kunala, the son of King Ashoka. The people of this country practice Buddhism, and here the Buddha, as a bodhisattva, granted eyes to a person. Great stupas with gold and silver decorations were also built in this country. Many people in this country follow the Hinayana school of Buddhism. In the writings of Faxian, Gandhara is portrayed as a country where Buddhist culture flourishes, with numerous exquisite Buddhist architectural structures. So, where exactly was this country known as Gandhara in ancient literature? Why do the accounts of the two monks differ so greatly? And what kind of influence did Gandhara have on Buddhist art and culture? Gandhara was an ancient Indo-Aryan civilization centered in the present-day northwest Pakistan and including parts of southeast Afghanistan, roughly at the outskirts of northwestern Indian subcontinent. The core of the region of Gandhara was the Peshawar Valley and Swat Valley. Due to its location at the intersection of South Asia and Central Asia, Gandhara has been continuously invaded and ruled by various foreign ethnic groups since the 6th century BC. These invasions brought diverse cultures and beliefs to the region, which fused together and laid the foundation for the flourishing of Buddhist art in Gandhara. This is the Behistun inscription located on a cliff in Mount Behistun, Iran. This relief was constructed during the reign of Darius the Great over 2,500 years ago. The inscription is written in the form of a speech by Darius the Great, praising his achievements and propagating the legitimacy of his rule. Among the 23 nations conquered by Darius, Gandhara is mentioned. Unexpectedly, just over 200 years later, Alexander the Great passed by this rock relief, initiating his wars to conquer the entire Persian Empire. In 334 BC, after consolidating the power of all Greek city-states, Alexander invaded the Achaemenid Persian Empire. The war lasted for a decade, overthrowing the rule of Darius III, the grandson of Darius the Great, and conquering the entire Achaemenid Empire. After forcefully conquering the Asian region, Alexander established numerous Greek city-states in his conquered territories to consolidate Greek rule. The Greek conquerors also expanded their settlements into the Gandhara region. In 326 BC, Alexander the Great suffered a defeat during his campaign to conquer the Indian subcontinent. Subsequently, the Seleucid Empire took over the entire Gandhara region and established Greek settlements centered around Bactria. Meanwhile, on the Indian subcontinent, the Maurya Empire, known as the Peacock Dynasty, was in the process of conquering the entire Gangetic Plain and establishing a centralized authoritarian regime. In 305 BC, Emperor Chandragupta Maurya of the Maurya Empire defeated the Seleucid Empire, incorporating Gandhara into the territory of the Maurya Empire. From this point onwards, 
the Gandhara region began to be influenced by Indian culture. Emperor Ashoka, the third emperor of the Peacock dynasty, who had embraced Buddhism, propagated Buddhism as the orthodox religion of the state throughout the empire, including among the Greek population under his rule. In the 2nd century BC, Greek settlers residing in Bactria once again invaded Gandhara and established a Greek-dominated kingdom. During this period, an incredible fusion occurred between Indian Buddhist culture and European Greek culture. By the mid-1st century, the powerful Kushan Empire emerged in northern Afghanistan, with Peshawar as its center of power. With the rise of the Kushan Empire, Buddhist culture in the Gandhara region entered a golden age, giving rise to numerous magnificent Buddhist architectural and artistic works. It was also during this period that Buddhism spread from India to Central Asia and, through the Silk Road, reached other regions of Asia, including China. In the 4th to 5th centuries AD, with the invasion of the Alchon Huns, Buddhism in the Gandhara region experienced a rapid decline. Numerous Buddhist structures and temples were destroyed, and countless monks were expelled. Buddhist art in the Gandhara region, particularly Greco-Buddhism art, virtually vanished during this period. This is why there is a stark contrast between the observations made by Xuanzang and Faxian during their travels to Gandhara, despite the mere 200-year gap between them. So, what exactly does the magnificent Buddhist art in the Gandhara region, as seen through the eyes of Faxian, look like? The earliest artistic works in the Gandhara region are small stone dishes dating back to the 1st century BC to the 1st century AD. Although the purpose of these dishes is not clear, it is evident that they exhibit distinct Hellenistic style. On one of the dishes, we see Daphne twisting to look back at the approaching figure of Apollo, a composition that reveals the artist's familiarity with Hellenistic motifs and narrative structures. At the same time, the artist chose to give Apollo the pointed hat of a Parthian, effectively situating this event in the greater Gandharan sphere to appeal to a local audience. Buddhist art originated from the Barhat Stupa and the Great Stupa at Sanchi, where Buddhist stories were carved on the gateways. In these reliefs, various Jataka stories depicting the previous lives of Sakamuni Buddha, as well as some of his significant events in his present life, were depicted. The protagonist of these stories, Gautama Buddha, was not represented in human form but rather symbolically through sacred trees, altars, the Dharma wheel, and footprints of the Buddha. People of that time believed that the Buddha, after attaining nirvana, would not appear in the world in human form. As a result, the origin of our contemporary Buddha images has become a subject of debate in the academic community. A large number of Buddhist sculptural artifacts have been discovered in the Buddhist ruins of the Swat region in northern Gandhara. Among these, a group of sculptures may have a certain connection to the origin of Buddha statues. The content of these early artworks depicts the Buddha, in the posture of the meditation mudra, sitting under the Bodhi tree, with Brahma and Indra standing on either side with folded hands. This depicts the story of Brahma persuading the hesitant Buddha to teach the general public after his enlightenment. In these artworks, the Buddha is depicted without wearing an upper garment, and the artist's focus on muscles and body structure differs significantly from Indian Buddhist art. The earlier mentioned stone dishes primarily exhibit Hellenistic content, but a similar themed artwork to the carvings in the Swat region has also been found. Therefore, this may represent the early thematic carving of Buddha statues in the Gandhara region. During the Kushan dynasty, Gandhara served as the political and religious center of the empire, and Buddhist art reached its pinnacle. The central city of Gandhara, Peshawar, was a major urban center on the Silk Road, much like Rome. While the city gradually declined in later history, during that time of prosperity, Buddhist practitioners in the vicinity of Gandhara built numerous temples and Buddhist sculptures. The anthropomorphic sculptures of the Buddha are often believed to have been influenced by Hellenistic sculpture, and it is even possible that the first Buddha sculpture was created by Greek artists from Bactria. The style of the monks' robes in the Buddhist statues of Gandhara bears resemblance to the himation worn by ancient Greeks. The contraposto stance of the upright figures, such as the 1st-2nd century Gandhara standing Buddhas. The curls of the Buddha's hair also resemble those in Greek sculptures, like Apollo Belvedere, a large quantity of sculptures combining. 
Buddhist and purely Hellenistic styles and iconography were excavated at the modern site of Hadda, Afghanistan. The word, Hadda, originated from Sanskrit, meaning, a bone, reflecting the belief that in ancient times, this place possessed the relics of the Buddha. Not only have the oldest surviving Buddhist manuscripts been discovered here, but various early Buddhist statues have also been excavated. One seated Buddha attended by Heracles Vajrapani and a Taish-like woman holding a cornucopia, the site of Hadda, Afghanistan suggests that the Greco-Buddhist art of Gandhara descended directly from the art of Hellenistic Bactria. During the same period, Buddhist pagodas began to be decorated with narrative reliefs depicting the life of Shakyamuni Buddha. For example, a schist sculpture depicts Shakyamuni teaching the first sermon to five ascetics who become monks and establish the monastic order. The Buddha reaches down to set the wheel of the law in motion. By this time, the wheel was a well-established symbol of the Buddhist teachings, or Dharma. Shakyamuni's death is the subject of another panel in the museum's collection, in which lay followers and monks are shown gesturing in grief. The Buddha's last convert, Subhadra, seated with his back toward us, is the only one who appears calm as he realizes that Shakyamuni has broken free of the cycle of rebirth and has reached nirvana. Despite the disappearance of Buddhist art in the Gandhara region due to the invasion of the Alchon Huns, it continued to flourish in surrounding areas such as the Swat Valley, Kashmir, and Afghanistan. Chinese Buddhist monk Xuanzang also visited the region in 630 AD and described Bamiyan as a Buddhist center with scores of monasteries and thousands of monks studying the Lokottaravada. The Buddhas of Bamiyan, located in the Bamiyan region of Afghanistan, served as evidence of this. Built in the 5th to 6th centuries AD, these colossal Buddhas stood at a height of 55 meters and were significant Buddhist cultural relics. Sadly, they were destroyed by the Taliban regime in 2001. Buddhist monks from the Gandhara region played a crucial role in the development and dissemination of Buddhist thought. Around the 2nd century AD, Buddhist monks from the Kushan dynasty embarked on the Silk Road and traveled to the capital city of Luoyang in China. There, they translated Buddhist scriptures into Chinese and introduced Buddhism to China. Archaeological evidence suggests that even before the arrival of Buddhist monks in China, Buddhist art from the Gandhara region had already made its way into China in the form of collections and reliefs. The Buddhist art style of Gandhara underwent evolution and development in China, and it accompanied the spread of Buddhist culture to countries such as Japan and Korea. Even today, we can still observe Gandharan Buddhist art in the ruins along the ancient Silk Road. In the 8th century AD, with the arrival of Islam, Buddhist architecture in the Gandhara had become ruins, and Gandhara Buddhist art was forgotten. It wasn't until the 19th century that archaeological activities conducted by the British in the Indian subcontinent allowed the world to rediscover this ancient religious culture. History has left us only with the ruins that have endured the ravages of war. However, perhaps through these remnants, we can once again glimpse what Thaksian witnessed and experienced during his travels to Gandhara 2000 years ago, and appreciate the splendor of Gandhara.